So two years ago, I saw the same pictures that Dave was showing on the screen with a cycle time of 103 days towards uh, 54 minutes. And at that moment in time, I decided that's the way we want to go with our teams. And at that moment in time, we have cycle times of six weeks before, it, eh, before we had an ID and bring it to production or even an emergency fix from the table towards production. And at this moment, we have a cycle time of 34 minutes. So it was really inspiring to hear the story at that moment in time. And I realize after two years that we made this tremendous progress with our uh, development teams. And today I want to share you a story of the development movement or the agility movement we are in the middle of. And I can say the more we know and the better we understand, the more I realize that we are just starting. So I'm really looking forward day after day to improve it even further. And in this talk, I want to share a bit on the journey we made, but more on the ecosystem that should be around your teams and around your continuous delivery pipeline to really enable the team. So if you remember one of the last sheets of Dave with the yellow circles on it and all the improvement terms on that sheet, that's really what we want to share with you, how we achieve that. And when you look to our architecture, it was one of the things we have to change. If we want to have a higher agility, we said, well, we have to simplify our architecture, decouple the different layers. And this is really what we aim to achieve. So standard products, uh, harmonized engines across the countries, and a unified data integration layer. And when you look to our teams, they are serving from, let's say, a commercial banking central team, nine different domestic countries. So we try to integrate in the different channels in the different countries. And that's quite a challenge. As you can imagine, ING is not that small, so it's hard to integrate and find the right uh, items. And when I think about continuous delivery, in my opinion, it's not only about continuous delivery. I think we should put the words continuous delivery of value behind it. And when you speak about continuous delivery of value, it's not about IT, it's not about the teams, it's not about the systems, but it's about the whole ecosystem around it. And it's really about challenging your teams, challenging the whole system you're working in, ING, or another big bank or insurance company, to improve further and further. And that's what we try to achieve. So we set up a continuous delivery pipeline, for sure, because it helps us to get better control, but it's also about the whole system around it. And everything, it's, it's the delivery of value and everything else is just supporting this journey. And then we decided in the management team, so the MT I'm participating in, we decided at the moment in time, we stop with reports and we stop with long-term planning sessions and plans. And we really stopped it. But then we said, well, we should set up something different. So this is not about the delivery DevOps team level, but this is really about the level above. This is about the management team managing 150 people, where we said, well, if we want to speed up our teams, we should set up feedback cycles in our management team as well and try to come up with an approach where we can visualize everything that's going on and where we can move from strategy all the way to the shop floor level with the execution of the strategy. And then we said, well, we have to set up an Obeya room or a visual management room or whatever you name you give it. Um, and this is where we are every Monday and every day in the stand-up. So on Monday, we're here for three hours with the whole management team. And, on, and every day we're there uh, around nine o'clock for the stand-up. And we say, well, let's stop with emailing each other and requesting each other for statuses. If you have a question, please ask him in the morning, share what you have to share. And um, my manager as well, eh, because he has, a, he has a line up all the way to the top. So when he, need, when he is looking for answers, he goes into the room and he's looking for the status of a certain risk item or a certain delivery item or whatever. And this really helps me to free up time to spend on the teams and to spend on improvement and to spend on other activities than making stupid reports. So one of my lessons is please stop with reporting, always creating plans, try to look for a good visual room uh, to set it up. And it really requires discipline to work this way. Yeah? So it also requires discipline from the management team. And then the second layer where we said, well, please stop with reporting is the, uh, the team level. Yeah? So it's the second layer where we said, well, try to set up visual management and stuff like that. And I think you're all familiar with this. 
a lot of teams who started the agile journey first they put some whiteboards in the in the in the in the corridor and, and put all the stickies there um, and work with it and what I see within ING is that a lot of teams say, well, no, we don't need the visual management. We use Jira or we use another system and we put all the user stories in the system and it's fine and we do a stand up with, uh, with a digital system. Um, and for me, this is very powerful to have the team boards on the, on the floor because when I came in in the morning or when I look to the boards, I really see the status of the teams. It's really saying me, are they in control or are they out of control? Uh, and this is one of the boards of the teams. They're almost in the middle of the sprint. And this is the board. So when I look to the board, I say, well, this team is out of control. And there's another team board, which is fully in control, uh, exactly telling me the status of the risk items, of the delivery of the incidents, of the patches and stuff like that. So the, the team board is really selling a story. And for me, this is crucial because in the stand-up, I try to had to attend in the stand-up every day at least. Uh, so today I have a problem because the teams are working and I'm here. But that's also the way for me to, to get grip on the team and see where they are and if you have any questions and they can raise questions and I try to answer them. So it's not about the continuous delivery as a tool, but this is really helping me to, well, to get feedback from the teams and, and feedback for the teams uh, themselves. So this is really about the team level. And then there's a third level and that's the application level. And with application monitoring, I think you're all familiar with the monitoring of infrastructure, CPU usage, uh, uh, and, and, and stuff like that. And we say, well, if we want to build in a feedback loop for the team, you can also think of other feedback cycles and other monitoring stuff. So the team was struggling with the stability of the continuous delivery pipeline. And at the moment in time, they decided, well, let's put monitoring on the continuous delivery pipeline because it's a crucial line towards production. So if that line fails, well, we cannot push software, emergency patches, for example, towards production. So the team start building their uh, own um, monitoring on top of the continuous delivery pipeline we have in place. And it's really helping them to see how stable the pipeline is, what versions are running in production, uh, which builds are failing. And uh, when they come in, came in in the morning, they see a red or a green uh, 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 result of the, uh, the build of the night, for example. So it really helps them spe to speed up and to understand in a better way the continuous delivery pipeline they have. So it's another way of, 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 of presenting monitoring. And then they said, well, we have some log files running as well. We don't receive incidents or real production issues from the users, but now and then there are errors in the application. So the customer is simply pressing F5 and then it's refreshing and the, 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 the site is working again. But we said, well, if we want to improve it even further, we also have to look to these small disruptions in the application and improve it from there. And having this in place, the continuous delivery pipeline really helps us to, well, hey, if, if we discover something, we can fix it and bring it to production in 34 minutes again. So that's the value of having insight in what's going on. And then some of my colleague managers ask me, how do you set up a continuous delivery pipeline? Because they get some consultants and the consultants offer them a big program or a big plan where they want to implement a full continuous delivery pipeline. And we say, no, let's do it the other way around. We started very simple with automating unit tests with a, some Jenkins on top of it and some deployment. And time after time we improve and we discover new opportunities or we discover new bottlenecks and add extra tooling to that. Um, and in just two months time, we go to the online banking channel. So at that moment in time, performance will be crucial. So we will add performance testing tools to that cycle as well. So now there's no need. So yeah, then the performance is good enough. Uh, so we did not invest in it. So we will do that as soon as we um, well, go to the online banking channel. So we really use the MVP approach to build our continuous delivery pipeline, adding tools time after time. And at the moment in time, we decided to put Docker there as well, because we can run easily uh, testing tools in a Docker container, and that makes the pipeline more robust. And, um, well, it's, it's, it's really a plug and play of new tools in the pipeline. And what we use is uh, XL Release to make this pipeline. And what I like of the XL Release product is really the visualization of the tasks and the activities that are in the pipeline. So when you try to build it very incrementally with an MVP approach, you can easily add 
new tasks and new activities towards the pipeline. So there are pipelines within ING that are not visible at all. There are no feedback loops. And I think it's very powerful to look for something that is representing the whole stack of tools that are connected to each other. Um, and it gives, well, information about what's in there. So this is really the development we use, uh, uh, development test acceptance towards production. And there is somewhere a break uh, over there, just before we go to production, because I'm working in a bank. So they requested me to put on a button and say, yes, this is approved, please go to production. Um, from my point of view, there's no value in it, because I don't know what code is there, what the test results are, so I really trust the team. But there needs something in place to, uh, uh, well, to approve it. <coughs> so it's a fully automated uh, process. And there's Muppet again. <laughs> this was in, uh, in Hong Kong. So uh, he's really traveling all over the world. So now you can say a lot, of, a lot of people are, let's say, satisfied when they have the continuous delivery pipeline in place. So uh, they achieved, uh, let's say, a length of uh, one and a half hour, and they say, well, uh, in the past it will cost me six weeks, and now I have a pipeline of one and a half hour, so that's good enough. And we say, no, we have to take it a step further. We also want to have insight in the pipeline. So what are the activities in the, different, in the, in the pipeline? How long does it take, and can we improve it even further? Because we want to speed up, because we want to have faster feedback cycles, especially, for example, on is the developer building uh, a secure code. Eh? So you need also a secure code review because this is really a learning cycle, how we is programming. Um, so we're really happy to use the tool and um, to see where our next focus point is. So at the moment in time, our testing was the longest uh, activity in the whole cycle, which is, well, I think normal. And then we decided that we uh, start with other tools to speed up the testing cycle even further and put some of the tools in Docker containers and the software to, to run it in parallel. So visualizing it helps us to, uh, to prove it even further. So has it something to do with continuous delivery? Yeah, for sure. But from our point of view, it's, more, it's all about having feedback loops from all different layers in the organization. So it starts with the management strategy to the execution, it start, and then we have the teams, then we have insight in the application and the continuous delivery pipeline, as well as in detail in the pipeline and the release cycles uh, themselves. Well, these are my suggestions. For us, it's really hard to be there every Monday, three hours long and every day in the management room. <coughs> but if it's hard for us, it's also hard for the people there. And Dave just said, hey, if, if, it, uh, if it hurts you, you have to do it more often. And what we recognize after doing it for almost, I think, uh, well, almost a year, it really becomes a habit and it becomes easily to do it. And, and it's, it's quite normal now. And the teams know on Monday uh, in the afternoon, I'm in the management room and we're planning there and we're setting up things. So, um, and one of the other things I really try to do at least, and it's quite hard working within ING, is to be there on the floor at least for two hours per day to really answer the questions of the teams very quickly. Uh, because they create the value. It's not me managing them. It's not me, well, being the chief of department. It's, it's really them that create the value. So if you're not there, if you're not there to answer the questions to solve the problems, well, they're waiting for you. And well, the value delivery is waiting. And that's actually where it's all about. And I think what's also crucial is to observe what's going on. Yeah, so I show you the team board, and the team is really struggling, and there are deeper problems uh, uh, behind it. And I think one of the problems for them, eh, that they have such a bad visual management, is they miss a kind of a bigger goal uh, from the product owner at this moment. So we're really working towards a new goal, and that is missing at the moment, so it's, well, it's not helping them. So I try now to help the product owner to get a new goal in mind and steer the team towards that goal to also improve the visual management uh, because it helps the team. So very frequently ask how things are going, why things are going this way, and if you can improve them and challenge them to improve them uh, even further.
And then one of the things I, well, maybe it's a bit stupid, but I just recently discovered that if you're not working and simplifying your architecture and simplifying your software, I think you really don't understand what agility means. I want to give you one example. We have a whole data warehouse and we retrieve data from six different systems. And at the moment in time, it's a, it's a bad process running uh, during the night. And a couple of months ago, we are really uh, reaching the, the end of the window. So uh, the, the data becomes bigger and bigger. And at that moment in, in time, we decided to refactor the whole data warehouse, or at least the, the way we retrieve the data from the source systems. At this moment, uh, they're not that fast that they can ship it in 34 minutes. Um, but at this moment, we discover that the new basic data request is 20 four times faster than it was in the old situation. So that's, in my opinion, really what agility means. If you can refactor your code base, if you can get rid of certain tailor-made pieces on top of packages you receive from a uh, supplier, then you're really speeding up uh, the process. Our next steps, while well, simplifying the landscape even further, trying to decouple them, and on the other uh, uh, side, trying to connect to the online channels. And for me, what's really crucial is the risk. As you can imagine, working within a bank, having the European banks and all the auditor parties, auditing parties, it's really, I think we are in control, yeah? But an auditor says, well, the question is, are you in control and do you have the right control framework? So for me, striving for continuous compliance is really the next goal. If we have a pipeline in place and we can say, well, this is really uh, proven or certified, having all the evidence under beneath it, that will really help us to speed up because risks loss is costing me a lot of uh, cost me a lot of time. And our aim is to uh, use Docker in production, and not because we have a problem, but because it's fun and it's new technology and it's challenging the team. Um, and we will be the third one within ING, so uh, we have some challenges there to uh, to solve. And what I don't know if you can see it, it's a cork on the ceiling. Um, and we made a kind of a wall of fame on the ceiling. When there's something to uh, to celebrate, we buy a bottle of uh, champagne. And we're just in a new location, and in a, the third or the fourth day, we had champagne, so there was really uh, the cork on the ceiling. And I think, well, that's a nice way of uh, celebrating successes. So the aim is to have a lot of uh, corks there in, in the next uh, well few weeks, months, years. So it's really important to celebrate the success and be proud of the team. Uh, in what they achieve, even if an experiment fails. I mean, eh, when an experiment is failing, you learn a lot. So we, at the moment in time, we move to a cloud uh, environment for the whole continuous delivery pipeline, and it costs us six or 10 weeks with very expensive consultants from uh, <coughs> a certain company. <laughs> but that's not a problem because we learned a lot. And at that moment in time, we learned that the cloud was not uh, mature enough to, uh, to move to for us. Uh, and now we're trying again. So we're w one year further and we're trying again to move to the cloud uh, environment there. And what I learned last week, or actually yesterday, uh, at this moment there's an audit going on, an internal IT audit in my department. And they're really proud of what they see and how flexible we are. But it's a shame they discovered many, many, many vulnerabilities in our continuous delivery pipeline. So the, ne the past few days I was really frustrated and then at the moment in time, I decided, well, this is a real opportunity. They help us to improve the continuous delivery pipeline even further and have a certified pipeline at the end if we solve all the issues. So what was a failure, I think, becomes, well, maybe the best thing we discovered this year because we can improve it even further, also from a risk point of view, because we are working within a bank. So that's quite important. And Muppet is there, or Animal is there as well, so uh, he's really enjoying the drinks. He's traveling uh, all over the world. So uh, that's it. Thank you. <laughs>